Anthony so much for being here today with us. So the first question is, could you tell us a bit about yourself? Tell us about your current position and your academic background. Yeah, for sure. So my name is Sydney Roy. Um, I grew up in Vancouver and I decided to take the environmental engineering program at UNBC and UBC. It's a joint program. Um, I graduated in December of 2017 and then I decided to do a little graduation trip around the world, which I do recommend everyone does after they graduate just to make sure you travel before you get a job. And then I was able to come back and get a job with All North in April of 2018. So I started as a civil engineer in training. Um, I did that job for about a year and then I changed over to management. So I started as our construction services coordinator. I did that for about four months and then I was pushed to construction services manager. So I've been that for about almost two years now. You mentioned that you kind of work as a consultant now. Could you yeah. just give us a little bit more detail of how your day is like? For sure, yeah. So obviously in consulting engineering, it's very project dependent. It's very dependent on what's kind of going on with the projects in Northern BC and what All North is bidding on, what we're winning. So I'd say the most typical things I do um, are project management. So I do run our crews for all of our field sites. Um, I do scheduling, budgeting for our office. I run our lab that we have here on site. I'm our radiation safety officer. So I'm involved a large part in the safety program here. And yeah, a lot of training with our summer students and our new hires. So recently, so we did a lot of work with the Ministry of Transportation. Mm -hmm. So the Ministry of Transportation um, creates new roads and bridges around the province. So a lot of the time I will be the project manager for All North because they are uh, contracted out by the ministry to do quality control on those projects. So basically I'll be in charge of sending people to site and making sure that they are following um, the technical specifications for the project. They're doing the quality management checklist, um, making sure everything conforms to the ministry standards and codes. Awesome. This sounds like a lot of responsibilities as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Moving on to the next question. You mentioned that you really like engineering from a really young age. Could you tell us yeah. like, what stood out to you about environmental engineering specifically and kind of why you decided on pursuing it? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I think, like I said, math was always my strong suit. Highest grades were more so in math. So I knew that I wanted to kind of go into something math related. And engineering kind of just ties in the practical aspect of math, I found. Like it's not just straight mathematics, but I also get to learn how that math works and then how I can apply it to real world situations. So that's something I've always been super interested in is kind of making a difference. And I figured engineering would be a good way to do that. Yeah. And then the environmental portion, like I said, I always knew I wanted to do environmental just because I love being outside. I love working in the outdoors. Um, I do aspire to go into renewable energy one day, so I figured that environmental would be the best stepping stone for that. So that's why I chose that program. Awesome. Next question, what are three habits or skills necessarily for highly successful engineers? I think one of the big things is you have to be very versatile as an engineer, especially in consulting. Like I said, there's so many different things going on. You kind of have to be able to do a bunch of different things. Um, the second one tying on to that would be the ability to learn how to do different things. And I believe that engineering school really teaches you that. There's just so much going on all the time and <laughs> school more so teaches you how to learn. It doesn't, it's not the same as um, your job. It's never going to be the exact same, but it teaches you how to actually learn. So when you get kind of into the workforce, you have the ability to learn how to learn, if that makes sense. The third one I want to say is probably time management. Uh, being an engineer with a lot of different things going on, especially in the consulting world, you need to learn how to manage your time effectively and just make sure that you kind of are able to prioritize your tasks and you're able to still book off time for non-work purposes as well, because it's very easy to get consumed in work and make that your entire life. But yeah. I do believe it's important to make sure you have time for fun as well. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. It's always good to have a work-life balance. Yeah, for sure. So moving on to the next question, what has been some of the most valuable or most memorable events that has happened over the course of your career? One of the most valuable things for me has been um, the support that I have from Olmarth and kind of the support I have from my superiors. Um, like I mentioned, I was a civil engineer in training for under a year and then I was very quickly pushed into a, a, a management position. 
and I was scared. I was nervous. I didn't think I could do it because I was still a recent grad. I was just fresh out of school, but because of the support that I had from my superiors and them being like, no, you can do it. You are capable of doing this. You are competent enough. You are good enough. And just kind of having that support in that transition phase between the, the EIT position to the, the manager position was so helpful. And like, it's something that I'll take with me for the rest of my life. Last question. What were some of the challenges in deciding a career path? Did your goals or plans change during your studies or once you have started your career? In gen engineering, there's kind of two routes you can take. You can take the project management side or you can take the design engineer side. And the world needs both of them. So there's no wrong answer in the way to go. I always kind of knew that I wanted to do the, the project management side. So I was lucky that that opportunity presented itself. When I was in EIT, I was mostly all out in the field. So I was doing a lot of materials technician work. Um, I was a survey assistant. I was doing quality control work. So I was working at a mine site actually, where I was being the, the quality control manager for all of the construction going on. So it was very heavily field-based mm -hmm. and I would not change that for the world because I learned so much being out in the field and I, I believe it's very important for engineers to start out in the field so they right. can have an understanding of what goes on out there and in real world conditions and then bring it back kind of that understanding to the office. So I was lucky that my transition um, from the field to the office was pretty seamless because I was able to understand what happened on those projects and then try and manage them. Mm -hmm. So I kind of had that overarching understanding of transition into the school focused questions. Yeah. What was your most memorable university experiences? And if you could give, tell us a little bit more about UNBC, that would be great as well. Most uh, memorable university experiences had nothing to do with school. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to play on the, the varsity women's soccer team up here at UNBC. So I would say the, the best part of my degree was being able to, to play a sport that I love while going to school and getting to meet so many new people and mm -hmm. friends um, up here. And that's one of the reasons why I decided to, to stay in Prince George after I graduated. Because as I mentioned, I'm, I'm from Vancouver. So mm -hmm. I was a big town girl and I've now moved <laughs> to the small town and I, I wouldn't change it for the world. So, so UMBC is amazing. Um, it's, a, it's a really small university, but it's very new, very modern, um, very innovative. Mm -hmm. I loved being able to do both um, UNBC and UBC because they're such different experiences. Right. So when I first moved to UMBC, I didn't know anyone. I was coming up brand new, just fresh out of uh, high school, but I was able to meet friends very easily. One, because of the soccer team and two, because UMBC BC is such a small town feel so it's a really like close tight-knit family kind of feel and I really enjoyed that because it was way easier to meet friends like everyone up here is so friendly so welcoming just like happy to have you here so I would recommend you UNBC to anyone I loved my experience there. So the next question is if you could give one piece of advice to your younger self what would it be? I think one thing that I would tell myself going through school again is have more fun because I, like I mentioned, I played soccer and I was very academically driven. So I always wanted to do well in school and trying to balance soccer, school, and a social life was kind mm -hmm. of very difficult for me. And um, I kind of pushed the social life aspect aside for a lot of my university degree. So I think that one thing I would tell myself is like, no, go have more fun. Like you don't need <laughs> to study 20 hours for this test. You can study 18 and still go out with your friends for a little bit. <laughs> That's one thing I would say for sure. <laughs> so what is your favorite part about being an engineer? favorite part about being an engineer is just having um, so many different experiences. Like I think with a lot of different jobs, you're at a nine to five and you're doing the same thing every day over and over and over again. And it can probably get pretty mundane, pretty tiring. But being an engineer, there's just so much going on all the time. So many new things to learn, so many new people to meet, like new clients coming into town. So it's like an ever changing thing for me. And I just love, um, I love having a, a different day every single day. That's been one of the best things for me. And I, I appreciate Allner for letting me have that. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really great to hear. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for doing this interview.